Hello, I am Sylvain Bonabel. I am honored to give a plenary lecture at the European Control Conference 21. I'd like to thank the organizers. I am so grateful to the European Control Association and the jury members of the European Control Awards. Today, I'll talk about geometric methods for filter and observer design, which lie at the intersection of automatic control and robotics. I'll motivate and illustrate the method through concrete examples of engineering interest. In this talk, I refer indifferently to a filter or an observer as an algorithm to estimate in real time the internal state of a dynamical system. The estimate is based on a dynamical model of the system and on sensors measurements. As you can imagine, accurate state estimation is a critical part of autonomous robots or self-driving cars. To start things off, I'd like to begin with a simple example from the field of mobile robotics. So takes the robot that's, um, well, there, uh, and which is driving along the corridors of the Ecole des Mines in Paris, and first let's discuss a dynamical model for it. Generally, we use what is known as the unicycle equations. At every instant in time, the robot has a position encoded in the coordinates x, y, and an orientation encoded by the angle theta. The idea that underlies this model is that if the wheels of the robot roll but do not slip, then the tangent vector to the robot's path has norm u and direction theta, which coincides with the robot heading. The quantity u may be viewed as an imperfect input, which is measured by the wheel speed sensors. The turning rate, omega, and the robot of the robot's orientation is another imperfect input also measured by the wheel speed sensors. U is obtained as an average of the wheel speed, whereas omega is obtained as a difference. In practice, sensors are not perfect, they are noisy. To show it, we could constrain the robot to move on rails to make it a follow straight line and look at what the imperfect sensors measure. Although the true motion is a straight line in the present case, this is the kind of motion the sensors measure. Random errors accumulate and deviate the measured motion from its true path. If we perform these experiments many times, we see the endpoint in terms of position varies owing to the randomness of sensor noise. The set of endpoints you can see on this picture was obtained through many simulations where Gaussian random noise constantly affects measurements of u and omega. In particular, the heading error of the robot then becomes a random walk. The equations show that an error on theta contaminates the position through all the translations that are then made, leading to the curved dispersion we observe. So what does this obtained density look like to you? Some authors argued it resembles a banana. This was early studied and noticed by Sebastian Trun and his co-authors in a well-known ICRA paper. The thing is that if the equations of the unicycle were linear, this is what we would obtain. That is, the variability of the position endpoint due to sensor noise would be Gaussian. And this would make things easy, as we have many tools to accommodate Gaussian distributions in state estimation. This is obviously not the case for the mobile robot. However, Greg Shirikian, along with co-authors, have shown that using a hidden Lie group structure, the banana distribution is Gaussian in some alternative coordinates dictated by Lie group theory. The former authors I mentioned, the one who coined the term banana distribution, published a very successful book called Probabilistic Robotics, which essentially studies statistical dispersion under the effect of random sensor noise in robotics at a general level, level and they came up with solutions based on particle filters. The observations that, that they made then benefited from the geometric insight of Gregory Shirikian, who showed that using appropriate geometric coordinates, we can map the banana distribution to an actual Gaussian, and he wrote a book on this topic. For a very nice introduction to matrix Lie groups methods in robotics for state estimation, you can also look into Tim Barfoot's recent book. This is the outline of my talk. Now that we have seen a simple example from robotics, 
I'd like to take a dive into a novel theory that offers a unifying perspective on the use of geometry for state estimation. It provides us with a theoretical insight into the use of groups for mobile robotics, but also it allows us to attack more complex problems, as I will show in the sequel. From now on, we focus on deterministic equations so that you will see no more sensor noise in the equations. Later, the link with the banana distribution will be explained. To start things off, I'd like to remind a few facts on linear systems and observers. This is because the geometric theory I'm about to show uses matrix groups to emulate linear observers and some of their key properties. Consider a linear system with state x, non-input a, and output y. The output y is a partial measurement of the state x. The goal of state estimation or observer design is to find x in real time using the dynamical model and the measurement y's. To the same, we build a linear observer. It consists of a copy of the dynamics where we propagate the current estimate state at x that we call the propagation step and a correction of the state in the light of the measurement y called the update step. The correction is based on the error between the measurement y and its predicted value and a gain matrix that converts this prediction error into a correction applied to the estimated state in order to nudge it towards the true state. The gain matrix must be designed by the user. On the left, we have the linear dynamics governing the true state and on the right, the linear observer. To design the gains, we can form the estimation error E, which is equal to x minus hat x, and see how it evolves. At propagation step, by writing the difference between the state evolution and its copy, we obviously find this equation. Similarly, we find the following evolution for the state error at the update step. It is important to note that both the propagated and updated errors are a function of the error only and do not directly depend on the state x. This is entirely owed to the distributive property of linear operators in both cases. Thus, the error equation is autonomous in the sense that the propagated and updated errors are a function of the error only. They don't depend on the state x. Of course, the goal is to design gain matrices in such a way that the error between the true state and the estimate tends to zero so that the estimate is a good approximation of the true state. We see that having an autonomous error evolution allows us in the linear case to design the gain matrix L regardless of the particular trajectory that's being followed by the true state X. This is a key property of linear observers we find desirable. Let's come back to real robots and consider the unicycle equations again. Assume one wants to design an observer to estimate the state, that is the variables x, y, and theta. Let's consider the propagation step. If we define the state error similarly and compute its time evolution, we see no distributive property is helping us since cosine and sine are nonlinear functions. As a result, the error equation depends explicitly on the state trajectory. Houston, we have a problem. This means that the previous linear observer analysis does not apply to the unicycle equations. Allow me to show you a way around this problem that works for a large class of systems. The idea is to change the state variable. Indeed, we associate to the state the following matrix, chi, which provides us with an equivalent state variable. This matrix consists of a rotation matrix of angle theta and a translation vector x, y. Applying this matrix to a vector makes it rotate and then translate. This matrix thus encodes the rigid transformation that maps the frame attached to the robot to the global frame that defines the coordinate x, y. Moreover, the set of all such matrices bears a group structure. This means that on the one hand, if we combine two such matrices, k2 times k1, we get another matrix of the same form, 
since the composition of two rigid transformations in a row is another rigid transformation in D. On the other hand, we also see that each such matrix possesses an inverse, which is merely the inverse transformation that maps vector of the global frame to vectors of the frame attached to the robot. Stability by composition and inversion defines what is called a group. This structure justifies that a natural way to combine elements of the state space is to use matrix multiplication. This group structure is the reason why geometry comes into the state estimation problem. This motivates the use of matrix multiplication instead of vector addition to combine elements of the state space. Of course, one the state space has been embedded into a matrix group. With this in mind, allow me to show you arguably the most important slide of this theoretical part of the talk. Let's assume we have a matrix representation of the state and let's mimic linear systems theory, replacing addition with matrix multiplication. We thus define a class of systems we take the liberty to call linear systems on groups. By merely replacing addition with matrix multiplication, I obtain in the realm of matrices chi the following discrete time dynamics, where phi is an analog to a linear map to be defined. So now, what's the property of linear maps that I have used earlier? It's the distributive property. If we seek its matrix multiplication counterpart, we see the property that phi should verify is as follows. In terms of group theory, such a map is called a morphism. Finally, I need a counterpart of the state error, but when the state belongs to a matrix group. In the linear case, E is a difference. Its matrix multiplication counterpart consists in multiplying the state by the inverse of the estimate, thus forming a difference, but in the sense of matrix multiplication. So now that we had it properly defined, let's consider a linear system on a matrix group. At propagation step, an observer consists of a copy of the dynamics. So let's see then how the error evolves. To compute how our alternative error propagates, we multiply the propagated true state by the inverse of the propagated estimate. We see the matrix inputs A's then disappear. Moreover, it's easy to show that the inverse of phi is phi of the inverse owing to the morphism property. Finally, by using the morphism distributive property, we end up with phi of the error. We see the error evolves independently from the trajectory chi at propagation step. It reminds much of the linear case and may be viewed as a simple generalization of the linear error autonomy property. This way, we have shown the error evolution is autonomous for the class of linear systems on groups at propagation step. At the update step, instead of adding the correction term, we can nudge the estimate towards the true state by also using matrix multiplication, although I have no time to explain the details. This results in what may be referred to as a linear observer on group. Similarly to the propagation step, the error may then be proved to evolve autonomously at the update step two for a large class of outputs. So, by defining systems and observers on matrix groups, inspiring from the linear case, we end up with an error equation that does not depend on the state trajectory being followed, and this is akin to linear observers. Here again, our goal is to design the gain functions, L, so that the estimated state converges to the true state. Autonomy of the error system is a nice feature, but concretely, what does it bring to actual observer design? Well, a first idea that underpins the external Kamen filter methodology 
is to assume the error to be small, that is close to the identity matrix, since an absence of error corresponds to eta being the identity matrix, and then to linearize the above error system. As the error system does not depend on the state explicitly, nor do the Jacobians, and under the small error assumption, the maps are always linearized about the same fixed point, which is the identity matrix. To show what the virtue of state trajectory independent Jacobians is, we can first compare our observer design technique to the conventional extended Kalman filter, that is the EKF. The EKF methodology consists in linearizing the system about the estimated state and then applying linear optimal gain tuning. For linear systems on groups, we can use the observer we have shown and compute the gains by linearizing the error system and then by using also linear gain tuning. This is called the invariant EKF. Even if both met methods are similar, a fundamental difference arises. In the conventional EKF, the system is linearized around the estimate. Thus, if the estimate is wrong, the gains shall be wrong in turn, which may amplify the error leading to a potentially destabilizing positive feedback. By contrast, in the invariant EKF, the error system is constantly linearized around the same point, that is, the identity matrix. As a result, the gains are no different whether the estimation error is large or very small, and the potentially harmful loop is suppressed. This is akin to the linear Kalman filter, which is optimal for linear systems. In a beautiful and seminal paper, Song and Grizzle have shown that for general nonlinear systems, the EKF is such that the error locally converges under some assumptions regarding the estimated state trajectory. However, this comes down to a chicken and egg issue. The observer converges under the condition that the error is well behaved. This evidences an actual caveat of the EKF. And as a matter of fact, the EKF may diverge in some challenging cases indeed. By contrast, if we consider the invariant EKF for the class of linear systems on groups I have shown, we were able to prove the invariant EKF is always a locally convergent observer, of course, under some usual observability conditions, but relaxing all the assumptions regarding the error's behavior. Allow me to introduce one last property before we turn to further applications. All we said about phi is that it is a morphism. It turns out, though, that because of that, phi possesses an intriguing property called log linearity. Indeed, with any matrix Lie group comes a locally bijective map called the logarithm, the log. It maps any matrix in the group to a vector xi. And it turns out that in those alternative coordinates, phi is a wholly linear map. Thus, up to a change of coordinates, the error propagation is linear in some finite dimensional vector space. This property was quite useful to prove the convergence of the invariant EKF. Moreover, we see that if the error is Gaussian in the log coordinates, then it remains Gaussian after the propagation step, since propagation transforms linearly the error in the log coordinates. This explains why distributions that are Gaussian in log coordinates suit well the actual propagation of the error dispersion for this kind of system. This way, we recover known results on the banana distribution for wheel robots and show they carry over to some potentially much more complicated systems. Log linearity provides us with a general mathematical framework to approach the banana phenomenon, if I may say so, with both academic and industrial consequences. This property is beautifully illustrated by an experiment conducted by the Robotics Institute at the University of Michigan. They had a bipedal robot called Cassie work for eight meters and studied statistical dispersion stemming from center uncertainty. We see the true statistical dispersion 
is banana shaped, although the state is of much higher dimension than the one of the unicycle equations, and the dynamics is much more complex. Besides, we see the invariant EKF that they used perfectly captures the actual dispersion, whereas the conventional EKF, whose uncertainty representation is based on Gaussian ellipsoids in the original state variables, fails to capture the actual dispersion. To show you the kind of results the invariant EKF may achieve, you can take a look at this bigger scale experiment conducted by the same team at the University of Michigan, where an invariant EKF inside the bipedal robot fuses inertial measurements with foot contact detections. We see the algorithm manages to accurately localize the robot since it looks perfectly able to locate in a global 3D frame the images that the robot is recording. Now, I'd like to show you some more applications that we or some other people have explored. This is the last part of my talk. At the time when the aerial robotics field was emerging in the 2000s, one of the key problems involved in the stabilization and control of small-scale aerial vehicles was that of the estimating the attitude, that is, estimating the orientation of the vehicle. Early work exploiting the Lie group structure for this problem, that is, symmetry prismatic observers, the invariant EKF, and above all the nonlinear complementary filter, underpinned the first generation of small drones. The attitude estimation problem can be cast into the framework I have presented by letting the matrix chi merely be the rotation matrix that encodes the attitude of the vehicle. It should finally be reminded that there pre-existed a rich literature on the control of invariant system on Lie groups at that time. Surprisingly, we had to wait until the advent of small aerial vehicles before the machinery of Lie groups started being used for estimation also. A somewhat more difficult example is inertial navigation, where one tries to estimate the orientation in space of a rigid body, as well as its position and its velocity. Thanks to a group embedding we proposed five years ago, and which is displayed on that slide, inertial navigation proves suited to the framework of linear systems on groups. As a result, the state error equation is autonomous, the dynamics is log-linear, and the invariant EKF possesses convergence guarantees. Following up this approach, Wong and Taibbi on, on the one hand, and Henderson, Zamani, Mahoney, and Trump on the other, recently came up with observers possessing very strong theoretical properties for this problem. The theories of linear observers on groups and invariant Kalman filtering that I have presented are the result of a joint effort with my close collaborator, Axel Barrault. The theory is largely recapped in our 2018 annual review paper entitled Invariant Kalman Filtering. He and I have also been working over the past decade with the company Safran, which is number one in Europe for inertial navigation systems. In particular, the theory was applied to the problem of inertial navigation aided by a GPS. Industrial inertial navigation is a complex application which is very demanding as it seeks an incredible level of accuracy. Earth is round and rotating and the sensors constantly need to be recalibrated online. Those curves were obtained on experimental flight data and are displayed in our annual review paper. What you see is the error made by the filter or the observer on the heading of the vehicle for initial errors ranging from 5 to 90 degrees. The behavior of the invariant EKF is very similar, whatever the initial error. By contrast, the behavior of the conventional EKF much degrades when faced with large initial errors. The improvement was sufficiently spectacular 
to motivate the development of various industrial products and to justify the effort as every new algorithm in the aeronautics and aerospace industry has to pass numerous stringent tests before it can actually fly. The Euroflur 410, which was released in 2018 by the company Safran, is the latest generation gyro-stabilized vision system for flying vehicles. It may be used for search and rescue, for wildfire surveillance, it also equips the police helicopters with a vision device, and of course, in the area of defense. The Euroflur is equipped with a telescope and is able to perfectly stabilize vision at a 10 km distance, despite the movements of the carrier. Indeed, when the ball starts turning one way or another, the framework which supports the ball in relation to the airplane is turned the opposite way so as to undo the motion. This way, the ball is kept stable with great accuracy. When the system is switched on, or when it needs to be restarted in flight, finding the initially totally unknown heading of the ball is deemed a very difficult task. This is called the alignment step, and the need to align, that is to find the orientation, is why in the Apollo program, the astronauts sometimes had to point to fixed stars with a telescope called the AOT, Alignment Optical Telescope. For the present application, alignments may be automatically performed by using the GPS and the inertial sensors measurements instead of manually pointing to stars. But the problem indeed is that the initial errors may be very large and the heading is hard to observe. Owing to the robustness of the invariant EKF to large initial errors, this task is currently performed by an invariant EKF inside the recent Euroflur 410 device. Of course, an accurate estimation of the position and the orientation of the ball is critical to accurately geolocalize in turn the remote features that appear in the image returned by the vision system. To finish, I'd like to mention one last application. This is quite a different application, and I try to start from the basics so that everyone can follow. In robotics, simultaneous localization and mapping, SLAM, consists in constructing a map of an unknown environment while simultaneously keeping track of the vehicle location within the map. SLAM was part of the first successful autonomous driving systems in the mid-2000s, and for some time it was arguably the hottest topic in robotics. Mathematically, it boils down to an estimation problem whose state consists of the position and orientation of the vehicle, as well as the various recognizable landmarks having unknown location. The set of all landmarks, the position of the, the landmarks, is referred to as the map of the environment and is part of the state to be estimated. When the vehicle moves, its motion is generally modeled by the unicycle equations, whereas the landmarks are assumed fixed. Then, when the vehicle is in the vicinity of a landmark, it is able to sense it using onboard sensors and measures its position in the vehicle's frame. The vehicle can then refine the estimation of this initially wholly unknown landmark and use it later as a map that is being gradually made more precise. This is a simulation of an EKF doing SLAM. As the vehicle moves in an unknown environment, it discovers some fixed landmarks and uses them to correct its trajectory estimate. The ellipses that you see are confidence sets in which the landmarks or, or the vehicle lie with a high probability according to the filter. Albeit the historical approach to SLAM, the EKF was abandoned owing to a lack of accuracy which may be explained as follows. Consider those two situations obtained by rotating both the vehicle and all the landmarks by the same angle. 
assume the vehicles move along trajectories that correspond also through this um, same rotation. This way, we obtain two distinct trajectories in the state space that share a common dynamics and which return the same measurements y as all the measurements are relative to the vehicle. And so they are not affected by an overall global rotation of the world. By definition, the existence of these two trajectories returning identical outputs means the state is not observable. Indeed, we may compute the observability matrix associated to the linearized system starting from X, where we recall the state consists of the vehicle and the landmarks. This matrix is obtained by propagating the state through the dynamical model and then forming the observability matrix associated to the corresponding Jacobians. This matrix has rank strictly less than the dimension of the state space. In other words, its kernel, which is the unobservable subspace, contains non-zero vectors. This is clearly illustrated by considering the direction in red that are generated by rotating the vehicle and the landmarks around the origin, starting from state X. You remember from my previous slides that a global rotation of the robot and the landmarks leads to indistinguishable trajectories in the state space. So, the directions in red at state X indicate a direction of indistinguishability in the state space, and thus they encode an unobservable direction of the nonlinear system indeed, and this is wholly consistent with them lying in the kernel of the observability matrix associated to the linearized system. However, there's a catch. We see indeed that those unobservable directions are different when linearizing about two different faraway configurations of the state. This is in contrast with linear systems where the observability matrix does not depend on the state X. As the robot moves, the EKF linearizes the system about the estimate. If the filter is run in open loop, then we recover the previous result that the directions in red lie in the kernel of the observability matrix associated to the linearized system starting from X. But as soon as the EKF starts performing updates, the estimate hat X jumps to another point of the state space where the corresponding unobservable directions is different. For instance, it may consist of the blue arrows. The problem is that this new estimate then serves as a linearization point so that the directions in red propagated through Jacobian matrix A are indeed in the kernel of the Jacobian matrix C linearized at the propagated state, but they fail to remain in the kernel of the Jacobian matrix linearized at the updated state. This way, the red directions fail to be in the kernel of C and also CA and so on. And thus, they are not in the kernel of the observability matrix corresponding to the linearized system about the estimated state trajectory. This way, the unobservable subspace artificially loses some of its natural elements. In the present case, the red arrows. And the rank of the observability matrix becomes then bigger than it should be. What this implies is that the linearized system used by the EKF to compute the gains contains spurious observable directions. And this is because the rotation is not correctly handled. The effect is that the filter then tries to correct the state in directions along which it actually has no information at all. Finally, this inevitably leads to degraded state estimates.
Once again, it turns out that there is a group structure that turns the SLAM equations into a linear system on groups. Following the theory of linear observed systems on groups, the error system is linearized by computing Jacobians always at the identity matrix, so that the observability matrix is everywhere the same as in the linear case. As a result, even if the robot moves, the linearized system used by the filter correctly captures the unobservable directions. This leads to right use gains that push the estimate in the right observable directions. Using a dataset from the University of Toronto, we could compare the invariant EKF to the conventional EKF for the SLAM problem. Both were evaluated against an optimization method that's computationally expansive, but systematically finds the optimal state. We see on the error plots that the invariant EKF consistently outperforms the conventional EKF, on the nine performed experiments and achieves results being as accurate as the optimal filter. This is interesting when we know that EKF was largely abandoned for SLAM years ago due to it being inconsistent. The conclusion of my talk is as follows. Since the advent of small aerial vehicles, a new field has emerged within the field of automatic control in relation to the robotics community. I focused on the theory of linear observed systems on groups, but there are of course closely related approaches in the literature such as equivalent observers and invariant observers. The perspectives for future research are numerous. For example, bringing the log linearity property to bear for more estimation tasks or control, or attacking new applications motivated by the boom of cheap onboard sensors. One particularly challenging application for the future, in my opinion, is the fusion of inertial sensors with vision, and this is a difficult problem, with breakthroughs being currently made using the closely related equivalent observers approach. Thank you for your attention. I'd like to thank all my collaborators who played a role in the results I have shown. I can't thank Axel Barrault enough for all the work we have done together over the past years. I'd be very happy to answer your questions now. Thank you.